Oh, hello there. I didn't see you. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the channel. My name is John. I'm a wedding photographer in Birmingham and you can find my work at jdsweddings.com. Uh, I have spent a few days, maybe like a week of this computer's energy and lifespan, getting every single catalogue and picture I could find that I've shot through weddings in the past uh, five plus, six plus years, and putting them in one massive catalogue, which now sits at about 55,000 photos. There are some from my start of the journey, you know, 2013 or so, which I have deleted or lost or archived, uh, but I thought this would be a really good time to just run through my most popular lens lengths, my most popular recommendations for maybe cameras or uh, specs or shooting styles, because I've got all this amazing data in Lightroom. I'm going to share it with you. So I generally shoot about 20,000 images for weddings uh, per year on average, maybe up to 30,000 on a good year. <laughs> 2020 I shot 39 pictures on this catalogue, so uh, wow. And that was a short, uh, short, short period then. I don't think that was even that year. Nope, that was the year before. So <laughs> I've shot quite a few times. And I used to shoot Canon, then I switched to Canon and Fuji, then I shot, switched to all Fuji. And I have also used other cameras, uh, like second shooters, second bodies borrowing and such for my photography. My primary camera is the X-T3, followed by the X-T20 with about eight and a half thousand. I then jumped down to the Canon 60, which I had for years, and I shot 16,000 on there, but in reality it's probably 40, 50, 60,000, but uh, I don't have those files anymore. And I've even shot with Canon 5D Mark I, Mark II, 70R, A7 III, uh, and the X100S. And I've got 40 pictures just from an unknown camera. I think that's like phone pictures, maybe. Uh, but the thing that we're here for is to find out what my most popular lens lengths are and the reason by why I shoot with them. I can tell that my most used lens I've ever used is the Sigma 35mm 1.4 lens. It's a prime lens, it's an art series, it's an incredible full frame lens. I would have used that with my Canon system back in the day. There were several weddings where I rocked nothing but a 35 and an 85 uh, 1.4 both the Sigma Art series. Now the lenses are pretty chunky, 35 surely is much lighter than the 85, but it, it yields amazing results, really crisp. At the time that it came out, you know, you couldn't really get any lens that could perform that well for the price of uh, what, 400 pounds. So absolutely brilliant lens. Behind that I actually have the 18 to 55 by Fuji, the 2.8 to f4 variant, and that is the kit lens. I've actually shot 11,500 photos with that one. I've had it about three years. Uh, it's a fantastic lens, mainly because of that stabilization. The downside, obviously, is that variable aperture. Makes a bit of a pain if you're trying to uh, get that blurry bokeh look in the background because the F4 is not going to give it to you. Uh, it's also going to cause some problems if you've set up a nice scene, you're struggling with maybe a bit of light and you want to zoom in, that aperture is going to dip right down. And uh, when you go back to the 18 mil side, it's going to brighten back up again. It just means a little bit of a uh, bit more editing and post. And it's a bit something that can be avoided. And uh, in a previous video, I've just mentioned I picked up the 16 to 55 f 2.8. Already shot a few weddings with that one. And that is coming in at one and a half thousand photos already. So <laughs> I'm, I'm using that one pretty heavily now. So I kind of like the 24 to 70 mil equivalent range uh, currently. I find that's natural, it's quite easy to use for the daily uh, weddings, you can get quite close to people, you can get quite wide as well. I would also recommend a 70-200 lens. I use the 2.8 version, 1000 shots. I've used the f4 version, that must have been a borrow because only 60 shots. But I've used the 50-140 to which is Fujifilm's equivalent of that length, uh, 6000 shots already. Really nice, stabilised again super super heavy for what it is uh, but it gives you that real nice uh, separation between the background and subject uh, it really emphasizes that bokeh you're not going to get uh, portraits per se at maybe 200 mil unless they're really really far away i'd stick to maybe a prime lens for doing portraiture uh, they're also a little bit sharper but that stabilization does help especially with things like video where you want to minimize any shake and the longer length length that you get more shake that's pronounced so stabilization really helps at that point i've got quite a few at 50 millimeters 
that would have been the Sigma Art 50mm. 1,085, I've got 1,105. Now that would have been a macro lens. Don't use macro lenses anymore, just because you can use macro ring um, ring mounts. They go in between the camera and the lens and inverts that um, focal distance, essentially. It gives you that macro effect without needing to buy a macro lens. I've used 24 mils. I've used 17 to 40 millimeters, which is that wide with Canon. I only about 400 shots in seven years, so wouldn't use that for weddings. 10 to 24 f4 OIS, which is the lens I'm with now. That's again a super wide lens. Uh, 500 shots in all the years that I've been using them. So I hope you're getting this at the moment. Wide angle lenses probably don't need them for uh, weddings. If you're going to use wide angle, I'd use a wide angle prime, like a 24mm instead. 5,000 shots with the 23 1.4. It's not bad because I only bought that about four months ago, so I'm using it quite heavily. I use it on my secondary camera, the X-T20. The sensor's not as good on that one, so I counteract that by having a nice, bright, bocalicious lens, essentially. Let's in a load of light, loads more than my utilitarian zooms, and I can kind of balance and shoot in similar light with a good camera with a zoom, or a slightly less good camera with a very good lens on the front. Yeah, I've shot with the 56 1.2 as well. That was that prime monster lens that you can get from Fujifilm. Uh, one and a half thousand photos over three years. Didn't use it as much as maybe I should have. Uh, it's quite slow to focus. It's quite limiting on a range of shooting a wedding. No 200 mils, no 400 mils, no tilt shifts, no none of that stuff. Never used those kind of lenses for my work. If I was to give anyone any advice on wedding photography, 24 to 70 mil and a 50 mil prime. Uh, convert that into Fuji language, that's a 16 to 55 millimeter lens and a 35 millimeter prime. Those two lens lengths are going to give you 95% of what you need. Make that 96 or 7% when you get some macro rings. And if you even wanna uh, skimp the cost and not pick up a chunky 50 to 140, zoomy you know, telephoto zoom you can get uh, adapter rings so you can get like a 1.4 adapter or a times two adapter they do a similar job to the macro rings fit between the camera and the lens just multiplies the uh, focal range by 1.42 beware it's not as good as it sounds it also takes away 1.4 or two stops of light as well so uh, an f 2.8 becomes a uh, f 5.6 times two. I think I've got that right. Good to have though and much much cheaper than buying a specific dedicated lens and you'll still get all the features with it as well. Might be good in a pinch. Moving forwards into 2022 I'm probably going to pick up a Sony a7 III and a 55 Zeiss lens. I have used a Zeiss lens in the past. I owned a Hasselblad 500cm with a planar lens. Best thing in the world and I can't remember why I got rid of it but to this day I tell my partner that it's probably the stupidest thing I've ever done is get rid of that. Not only because it's worth about six times what I bought it for nowadays but it's a, an icon of photography. And even if I'm not going to use it it's just one of the best cameras that's ever been made. So really like Zeiss, um, the planar lenses and the Distagon and all these uh, fancy lenses that you can get with them. They aren't cheap. But wedding photography is a, um, a genre of photography where you cannot skimp on your gear. You have to get the best and you have to perform in all situations, all lighting, all year round, every angle, all this stuff. So probably going to get myself a nicer, nice little uh, Zeiss lens going forwards. Pick yourself up a kit lens if you need to. 18 to 55 kit lens from Fujifilm is fantastic as I can tell uh, or upgrade if you can it's about a 700 pound difference to the 16 to 55 if you're working with full frame maybe the RF series and you you've got several million thousand pounds to spare you can pick up those 24 to 70 f2 lenses but the lower the aperture on those zooms the bigger they get and the more expensive they get and they are heavy you want to pack light for a wedding you don't want to be carrying around heavy stuff all day especially if you do this uh, maybe more than 20 times a year, you will regret it, and the older you get it, just... It, mm, I'm just getting old, I think. <laughs> so if you like that rundown and that absolute nerd knowledge of all the gear that I've used, and hopefully I've sprinkled through some example photos from each of those throughout this video, stick around and subscribe. You may see my journey as a transition towards more of a uh, full-frame camera going forwards, potentially. Uh, stick around, see you in a future video.